Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today. Right, we're going to talk about common reptile problems, episode number 11, which is going to be overgrown beaks in turtles and tortoises. Okay. Now, just before we get into that, right in that corner right there is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that. For those that already have, we appreciate your subscription and follow along week after week after week. Now, let's get right into this. Okay, so let's talk about overgrown beaks on turtles and tortoises, right? It's a common thing that happens a lot, and we're going to talk about why, and we're going to talk about how to deal with it, okay? Now, if you haven't seen our other video on how to deal with uh, overgrown beak in turtles and tortoises, make sure you check that out way down the video list, way down below. I'm going to talk about some things not to do that a lot of veterinary practices like to do, and I'm going to talk about things that you should do that makes it less stressful for the reptile itself, okay? And it's actually easier. Turtles and tortoises. Uh, you have everything from sulcatas to leopards to Russians to hingebacks to hermans to star tortoises to redfoot to yellowfoot. The list goes on and on and on. And of course, we're not even going to talk about the amount of turtles there are on the planet. Uh, but what I'm going to use today is I'm going to show you an eastern box turtle, okay? Awesome little guys, that's a common thing, okay? Let's talk about the overgrown beak and why that happens first and foremost, okay? When we start talking about a turtle or tortoise's beak becoming overgrown, why does that happen? Well, it generally happens because there's either, for the tortoise or turtle itself, a lack of interest in having its beak essentially trimmed down by natural things, okay? Meaning it doesn't... Uh, doesn't go kind of rub its beak on things. It's not chewing on on harder things, or it's not being fed things that are harder from time to time. Uh, that will allow it to just basically trim that down. Now these guys can do that in the wild. Okay, so they'll go and they'll they'll essentially chew on rocks from time to time. They'll go and they'll bite on rocks. They'll bite on harder things. They'll bite on pieces of wood, stuff like that. Uh, even when they're trying to eat, or they may just accidentally do that, and it helps to keep those beaks trim down a little bit. But in the event that for some reason, whether inside of captivity or whether in a natural setting, you have an overgrown beak and you see that, how do we deal with it? Okay. So talking about the problem and the cause, the cause really, it, when we say it's not really due to human error, yes, it can be a little bit if they're not given adequate things within inside of their habitat, if it's just literally the bare minimum stuff inside the habitat, that can help contribute, but ultimately it's on the turtle or the tortoise to keep that beak trimmed down, generally speaking, if it has the right things within inside of its habitat or in the wild, okay, that's kind of on them. But how do we deal with it? Bailey, let me see the uh, baby turtle real quick. All right, now, <laughs> well, he was out for a little while. All right, so this little baby box turtle right here, okay, this little guy has an overgrown beak. So how would we deal with that particular problem? Well, it's really easy, okay? Now, a lot of guys, a lot of folks will do things like Dremel tools, electric things that will zizz it down, a lot of your veterinary practices do. That's incredibly traumatic to the animals and it stresses them out big time. Not only is it high pitched whining noise, there's also the vibrations from the zzz all the time. And then they have that smell because it literally does grind but burn at the same time that beak. Okay, so that's incredibly stressful takes a long time to do too. All right. Now the question becomes, how do we hold the turtle's head to be able to do this? All right, baby, let me see the back real quick. I'm going to do it this kind of from here. So really what you'll have to do with your turtle is you have to patiently, most of the time, wait until his head is sticking out far enough. And then you just hold behind the head. You hold it out and you could take something like nail clippers, holding the head out and you just trim that beak right to flush. It's just that easy, okay? Now, when I say it's just that easy, a lot of us are like, oh, yeah, it's just that easy. The, the part that's not easy is getting the turtle's head out and keeping it out long enough to essentially not pinch it off, but pinch it in such a way that you're not hurting the turtle, but he's not able to draw his head back into the shell. Then you can take your nail clippers and just clip, 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 and it's done, okay? When it comes to a Dremel tool as a bzzz for just over and over and over and over and over for just extended periods of time, that is ridiculous and just shouldn't be done to the animals, okay? Now, 
Trimming them down is going to be kind of up to each individual species as to far as to how down how far down you go but you don't want to go too far down but you don't want it hanging way over the bottom of the lower jaw okay because the lower that the beak goes the harder it is for them to take bites of food because they can only open their mouth so wide so if that goes way over the bottom jaw he may only get it up to here and that's the amount of space he has to be able to get it over food even though his mouth is way open that beak is basically a blocker that keeps him from being able to actually take bites of food. So you don't want to go way back. And they do have, there can be sensitivity once you get further up the jawline, but that beak is no different than iron nails or anything else. As long as you do it within reason, there's not going to feel any, any ounce of pain, no different than their nails or anything else. Okay. Hopefully this has been helpful. This is Common Reptile Problems episode number 11, which is dealing with uh, or just the simple issue of turtles and tortoises overgrown beak. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, the bell for notification. Make sure to follow along with us. Also, go check out our TikTok channel entitled Reptile Rangers, our Instagram page entitled Kernersville Reptile Zoo. Also, feel free and come and see us here at the zoo. We have the zoo, we have the storefront, we carry all the supplies and all kinds of pets. All right, so if you're looking for anything, we have it. Now, also, as we start going along, we do have a raffle, a couple of raffles going here at the zoo for Christmas. For those that might be interested, a lot of our people are. We do a feeder bug giveaway for those that have dragons and geckos and things like that. We do a folding knife giveaway, a fixed blade knife giveaway, one of our zoo t-shirts, and we're also doing a open front terrarium giveaway this year. So if you want to know anything about those, feel free to give us a call. Our information will be in the description below for those that need to get in touch with us. The address and everything here for the zoo. We appreciate you guys following along week after week after week. Make sure to write in and let us know of other things you want us to film about. And we'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.